Uh, we're going into the Q&A session, and I'd like to ask to begin with maybe the writers to talk about, we all know why you write, it's the homecoming and everything, but if you can just pinpoint, you know, that feeling uh, and the genesis of that feeling that took control of you to actually make you write this piece, whether you wanted to or not. So, who would like to start? Thank you. I think we all have memories of that, don't we? Yeah. And I think that when you think about your experience, having uh, you know born, born and raised here and going there, and you, you were saying that you were you didn't feel at home, but it was your home because it, when you think about it, the Philippines. Uh, if you were born here, it's that uh, home that you've only heard about or dreamed about, and you're finally there, and you probably felt like in two worlds. It's like all of a sudden, it's like all these you know decades and even centuries all of a sudden all enveloping you all at once, and it's hard to. Uh, you know, uh, put that into context. Yeah, it's totally normal. Yeah. Oh, in my case, it was weeks. My father died, so I mean, I instantly had a reason, and um, I think because I wasn't home, I wanted to this writing. And this is what I always said: writing was my way of simultaneously mourning him and expunging myself from the tragedy, because I find that. Of death, and this was my way of remembering it. 
that was that was the first time she actually kind of warned me because I had missed warning because I'm having Oprah moment. You see her? <laughs> <laughs> but um, but actually, the, this is what I mean is by the time I had arrived, the wait was over. My mom had gone back to her um, to her um, usual habits, and my my brother had to remind her that well, you know, Mama, it is a funeral. <laughs> because she was just that kind of a weird. And so I thought that this was the best way that I could, you know, bond with her at a moment when, you know, as an eldest daughter, I I could not, I wasn't there. Yeah. You know, I think also that, you know, uh, we all know, I think, when we've lost loved ones, that when it comes to mourning, uh, uh, your grandparents or your parents, uh, it never ends. And when you hear you know, stories like this, it's like you're living it and you feel it, tight at your heart. And so it's totally natural. And I think it's wonderful that when we cry, Filipinos uh, are pretty emotional, as we know, that when you cry, when you're hearing your stories and other people's stories, I think it's beautiful. Because you know, it means that they are still uh, having an impact in your lives. And that means they are still alive. And uh, the feeling that they give you makes you even more alive, and, uh, and it reminds you also of your own origins, you know, so when you think about, when we think about our parents, whether we're in other countries, other parts of the world, you know, whether we like it or not, whether you love or hate the Philippines, the uh, Philippines is part of us. It's undeniable, and I think even, uh, even some, you know, Filipino Americans who haven't been or planning to go, I mean, it's, it's something that you have to do, I think, you know. Um, how about you, James? Uh, by the way, before, uh, if you have any questions for our writers, I just uh, want to remind you that we have books. It's a wonderful collection. All of you should have a copy. of There's several copies. You should buy one for your own personal library, one for your uh, friends and relatives, uh, and also one for a friend that maybe you haven't seen for a long time. And this might be an interesting way to connect. It's like, hi, John. I haven't heard from you for a while, but look, I have a gift for you. And maybe you'll, uh, you know, actually convince them to, like, Oh my God, I haven't heard from him for a while. Uh, uh, I forgot his email. Maybe I can Google him, you know. Uh, so in, in case you forgot to, you know, write down your address and phone number and email. No? Uh, but also it's Mother's Day coming up, so you should buy one. In any case, if you have the funds, buy several copies. It's a wonderful, uh, you know, gift, not only for a Mother's Day, but, you know, uh, Christmas is coming up, and then there's New Year's, and there's Valentine's Day, and all the birthdays, all the birthdays that you guys have that you celebrate. So, you know, you should really, they're there, they're just waiting for you. Buy me, touch me, read me, you know, feel me, you know. So, uh, yeah, they're there, I can feel them, you know, just urging you to get them. Oh, by the way. Um, so, um, any questions uh, from the audience for our writers or for our, our wonderful editor here? Oh yeah, in that case, again we want to thank uh, LIFE, short version of the organization, and the Philippine uh, Consulate here of San Francisco. Uh, for this, uh, for and uh, also Tahana Books mm -hmm. and Rennie, please. Oh, just, uh, uh, wanted to thank Eileen's husband.
Stefan Paul Casineto for videotaping this evening. And again, thank you writers for coming to share, and our wonderful readers. And again, please check out the book, and please, uh, you know, it is a Filipino affair. Please, let's finish the food. And also, there's book signing. The editor is here. The writers are here. This is a perfect time to buy the book. And not only that, by the way, you don't have to think about, oh, I'm going to have to get the book later. No, it's right here. How easy can it get? Thank you all for coming. <laughs>